Hello and welcome to U News for Wednesday, June 12th. I'm Andrea Linares. Based with these, Lorraine Caceres is in Santo Domingo with the latest on this investigation. Lorraine, how are you? What do we know so far? Andrea, we are outside police headquarters where authorities are expected to offer a press conference with the latest details in this case. Last night, we were at court where Eddie Feliz made his first appearance, a judge formerly charging him with gang activity and also intent to commit homicide. His lawyers are saying that right now the biggest challenge has been to keep him safe because he has received threats and also his mother, who he had, we had a chance to talk to, was just commenting on how uh, difficult this whole situation has been, not only for her son, but also the entire family. Let's listen. We'll appear again in court today at around 5 p.m. And this is to so, so the judge can determine how much time he will be in jail before the trial against him begins. Andrea, back to you. Lorraine, I understand the lawyer and mother of the first suspect arrested say he is innocent and had no idea the attack was going to happen. Can you elaborate on that? That's correct, Andrea. Right now, his lawyer and his mom, as you were explaining, say that he was the person that drove the motorcycle, that he's actually a really big fan of David Ortiz. He had no idea this attack was going to happen, and he would have never done this if he knew that David Ortiz was the target or that attack, an attack was even going to happen. We know that um, the authorities are saying that they have surveillance video of him actually. Do we at least know the identity? of those suspects and what was their involvement? right now are not saying exactly who was the shooter of all the people that they have detained. We do know the identity of one of those suspects and his name is Oliver Mirabal, but as I was saying right now it's unclear who exactly was the shooter. We do know that they're not looking for anyone else, that they believe they have everyone in custody. So um, some of them are expected to appear in court actually later this afternoon when the first suspect Eddie Feliz Garcia also appears. So we'll be in touch on the latest details to this case because we will certainly be present at court if this happens later today. Back to you. Thank you, Lorraine, for that information. Excellent reporting from the DR. Office. Meanwhile, President Donald Trump has asserted executive privilege, privilege over documents related to the addition of a citizenship question to the 2020 census. Coming up next, new court action. Welcome back to U News. The former sailing coach at Stanford University is expected to be sentenced today in the college admission scandal. John Vandemore pleaded. The world was in a state of suspense Monday after a helicopter accident in Midtown Manhattan that for many was a reminder of one of the darkest days in New York City's history. Peggy Carranza has more on the incident. The crucial trial in Arizona has come to an end. Scott Warren, a teacher and activist, was facing significant jail time for providing humanitarian assistance to undocumented immigrants. Dulce Mascareño has the latest on the jury's decision along with reactions from Arizona. A new report found that the medical needs and privacy of immigrants in custody are also coming up next. It's a shocking act of violence. And welcome back to Unions. A, a terrifying scene caught on camera. A teenager grabbing a toddler in a car seat and slamming him to the ground. It all happened in a parking lot in Edmond, Oklahoma. Grecia Lastra has more. And now to another sad story involving a child. A Texas family is mourning the loss of a three-year-old child fatally. Just imagine not being able to communicate how you feel or what you need or want. Those are the obstacles that eight-year-old Kyler Mills has to face. But he's able to do those things thanks to a communication device that operates much like a tablet. Unfortunately, he doesn't have it anymore because someone stole it from his mother's vehicle. Meridi Marungi has that story. Hopefully he can retrieve it. And up next, 10 stories from around the globe, starting off in Hong Kong, where protests erupted again overnight. Tens of thousands of people took to the streets demanding the government kill a bill that would allow extradition to mainland China. And their efforts may have worked, at least for now, as lawmakers have postponed debate on that bill. Ilin Cardet has the details. 
Also, Russian police detained at least 94 people at a protest in Moscow calling for punishment for police officers involved in the alleged framing of a journalist. Police abroad in Mexico, it was one of the biggest upsets in boxing history. Mexican-American boxer Andy Ruiz Jr. emerging as the heavyweight champion of the world and as many champions do after winning a title against huge odds, he's making the rounds and being treated like a national hero in the place he considers home. Azul Alvarez has the story. It seems like everything Amazon does. She's got a preview of everything that's coming up next during the second hour of U News. Scott, will take it away. Thank you, Andrea. We have a number of major stories we are following in the next hour of U News. We have the latest from Boston on the condition of Red Sox superstar David Ortiz, along with an update on how this attack could have a larger impact on the Dominican Republic itself. And we also have an update on the search for Jennifer Doulos. She's the missing mother of five from Connecticut, her estranged husband now free on bond. His lawyer also is speaking out. And with Alzheimer's, she's impacting nearly one third of senior citizens. Could new research soon lead to a vaccine? We have details and more coming up in minutes. Andrea. No, oh, that would be great. Thanks so much, Kato. We'll be waiting for you. But first, welcome back to You News. Welcome back. It's so rare, it's considered the Olympic medal of Boy Scouts, and very few people even know about it. It's an even higher rank than Eagle Scout. As Carolina Rosario reports, one Dallas teen has set out to earn this award and hopefully make a big difference in the process. Check it out. Kudos to him. He's a bright young boy with a huge future ahead of him. And an incredible animal rescue in California. Check this out. This one. And June is Pride Month, in case you didn't know this, which is why zookeepers at the Denver Zoo are sharing the love story we have for the first hour of U News. But remember to stay tuned for hour two of U News. We have much more information coming up next with my colleague and friend, Carolina Sarasa. Thanks so much for watching and have a great rest of the day.